great concern about the uh, disproportionate response of Russia. Signs of a resurgent cold war fears that the oil supply could take another hit as Russia expands its assault on a U.S. ally. Plus, money that really does grow on free. The, the fruit that has enough fuel to power a 747 on this American morning. Thanks very much for being with us. We begin on Monday, a new week. It's the 11th of August. Good morning, Steve. Welcome back. Thanks. Welcome to our break. The tourists and colleges in the south of my doctor. I'm not sure it's a break. Poor dad. All right, well, breaking news now. Russia mounting new air attacks in a fight over the breakaway territory south of Setia in Georgia. Warplanes now targeting the area near the president's palace. This comes as Moscow demands Georgia lay down its weapons or face a reported 9,000 troops in another breakaway province. Georgian officials rebuffed this ultimatum, but Georgia's president says that he has signed a ceasefire proposed by EU officials. Also this morning, Russia saying it is now in control of the capital of South Ossetia, that is the breakaway region of Georgia at the center of this latest conflict. Russia also reportedly taken out radar sites, cutting off postal routes, and ship traffic in the Black Sea. Days of flat fighting have left hundreds of civilians dead. Pakistan President Pravet Musharraf's spokesman says the embattled president will not step down despite mounting calls he do so to spare Pakistan the bitter impeachment process. The ruling coalition says it intends to begin the proceedings alleging that Musharraf violated the country's constitution and, quote, eroded the trust of the nation. Well, the Olympic dream is still alive. American swimmer Michael Phelps' quest for a record eight gold medals continues after the Team USA's dramatic victory in the 400-meter freestyle relay. Teammate Jason Lezak swam the anchor leg, coming from behind to beat France by just a fingertip. The race erased the two world records. It's the second gold medal for Michael Phelps. Up next is the 200-meter freestyle. Well, back to our breaking news. Go ahead. Uncle Sam wants to go green when delivering the mail, so they got some fuel-efficient cars. Well, now the program's hit the skid. Uh, Find out why. And the amazing Dear Torres. They had this great plan. It was supposed to work perfectly. It didn't quite happen. Great plan. I mean, here's the case where the Postal Service was trying to do the right thing. What they discovered is they were doing it with the wrong type of fuel. The U.S. Postal Service hoped to take the lead on delivering mail in a more fuel-efficient way. Betting its fleet of flex fuel vehicles would do it. They run on a mixture of ethanol and gasoline, but the road to success has been a rocky one. The infrastructure for ethanol is not available everywhere. For example, in New York, metro area, you cannot buy ethanol anywhere. That's just one of the problems the Postal Service found. It did a study which showed only a fraction of the 36,000 vehicles in the flex fuel fleet are actually using ethanol. Carriers like Richard Malik have never used it. Has there ever been a time when you thought, let me at least look for a place where there might be some ethanol around here and have been unable to find it? I never bothered to do that, yeah. <laughs> Not only is it hard to find, the Postal Service study showed their flex fuel vehicles got as much as 29% fewer miles to the gallon. So how did it happen the Postal Service invested in something that clearly is not working? Back in 1992, the federal government mandated 75% of its agency's new vehicles run on alternative fuel. The flex fuel vehicles seemed to be the best choice, as they were cost efficient. They did not turn out to be fuel efficient. It's driving costs up everywhere in the country. And, um, and the Postal Service is now seeing that as well. And they should be allowed to get rid of these vehicles if they need to. Texas Governor Rick Perry has been working to get the federal government to reduce its dependence on ethanol fuel. The ethanol uh, program looked like a good idea. Uh, and the bottom line is it's turned out to be an absolute boondoggle. Despite criticism, the Postal Service sees a future where ethanol can work. It says its use should not be abandoned. We see the trend from the automaker, we see the trend from the um, ethanol producer, that we see the trend will lead to where we can break even or even save money with the ethanol fuel vehicle. When asked if ethanol should be reconsidered as part of energy policy, the Department of Energy said, looking toward the future, we must have a diverse array of cost-competitive technologies and sources to overcome our addiction to oil.
And since the early 90s, the Postal Service has tested vehicles run on other alternative fuels like biodiesel and electricity. The Postal Service decided to delay the purchase of more alternative fuel vehicles until 2013 when they expect better options to be available for them out there on the market. Yeah, I mean, it was a chance they took when they, when they tried this uh, right. years ago, but yeah, hopefully in the future the technology will be better. I think it will. Thanks, Jason. All right.